To think the Mughals would prove such harsh taskmasters. <laughs> Forgive me. I did not know you had suffered so in your quest for the horn. I must say, your spirited accounts always come as a welcome change from the arid reports which fill my days. Though I have lived in these lands my entire life, to hear you speak of them, there is much and more I have yet to see. Truly, yours was a marvelous journey. Long and arduous, I. Not unlike the journey that Ishgard has at last embarked upon, thanks to the efforts of you and yours. By your deeds, you have helped us to lay the foundation for lasting reform. The formation of the Republic is but the beginning, for it is not only our system of governance which must needs change. We, the people, must learn to let go of our hatreds and rise above our bloody past. I only pray that I live long enough to see us achieve some measure of success, that I might know the lost did not die in vain. I can still see you there on the steps of faith, striding fearlessly towards the worm. If you could do that, who are we to balk at the challenges ahead? The question of how best to strengthen ties with the other great nations of Eorzea has been debated at length in the Lords and Commons of late. As you may imagine, maintaining stability during this period of historic upheaval is our paramount concern. Nevertheless, we are greatly indebted to the Alliance for their support during the Grand Melee, and it would be remiss of us not to repay their faith in kind. Of course, we owe you the greatest debt of all. And it is my hope that in extending our support to you and the Scions, we might also express our gratitude to our neighbors, nay, our fellow Eorzeans, whom we pray you will continue to protect. The Lords and Commons agree on very little, but not a soul in either house begrudges your order this offer of patronage. For all you have done and will do, we thank you.
May I ask a personal question? Now that the dust has settled, what will you do? Not as a scion, I mean, but what do you want for yourself? Lord Commander, pray forgive the interruption. News from House Voton. An urgent message for the Warrior of Light. I was instructed to deliver it without delay. Master Thancred returned to the manor a short time ago, bearing an injured maiden. Master Leveilleur and Mistress Tataru are tending to her wounds, but they like not her chances. Respectfully, my lord, they have requested the Warrior of Light's immediate presence. You must go to them, my friend. And I shall go with you. For every ending marks a new beginning. From tragedy and sacrifice, we rise to greet a new dawn, as did she. Only to be drawn unto another battlefield, another cause, as if by fate. Is that... Alizé, Alphino's twin sister. She ran afoul of the Warriors of Darkness. I had been tracking them since the ceremony at Falcon's Nest. Little did I know I was not the only one. Evidently, she had learned of their activities and attempted to shadow them on her own. Poorly. I rescued her in the Twelves Wood, and together we fled north. But though I made every effort to cover our tracks, they caught up with us on the Ishgardian border. And in the ensuing struggle, Elise took an arrow to the shoulder. It was only after we had made good our escape that I realized it was poisoned. Thank you for coming so quickly. And you, Sir Emmerich. Think nothing of it. How is she? We have done all we can for now. Although the immediate danger has passed, the poison yet lingers in her blood. We came to Eorzea together. Hoping to bring salvation to the realm our grandfather gave his life to protect. But when confronted with the bitter realities of its politics and its petty powermongers, she was driven to anger and to doubt. She refused to become embroiled in what she termed Eorzea's squabbles and distanced herself from the Scions. Though she remained hopeful of a brighter future, she would walk her own path. Would that it had not been so perilous. For all our differences, she is as dedicated as any scion to the salvation of Eorzea. But more than that, she is my sister. To be reunited with her, only to lose her forever. Gods, even to speak the words. 
Take heart, Master Alphino. She will be attended by our most skilled Chirurgians. Bear Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary at once. Apprise Captain Whitecape of the situation and inform him that she is to be treated as my personal charge. W wait, don't go. Please, come closer. The warriors of darkness are in league with the Asians. Slaughtering the primals is but the first step in their plan. They make for Zelfatol to bring about Garuda's summoning and to kill her. You must... you must stop them. I... I shall inform the others at once. Master Thancred, I would ask that you accompany Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary. Your knowledge of her injuries may well prove useful in determining her treatment. Of course. Thank the gods! What happened? So they were unable to see the ritual to its completion. Then Garuda is no longer a threat, and whatever the Asians and the Warriors of Darkness were planning has come to naught. But we should not tarry. The Knights have secured our path to safety. Well, well. What do we have here? You'd better not have killed the Primal without us! You! Wait, I know you. Still walking, I see. I could have sworn my aim was true. Just what is your game? Leading us a long way so these fools could step in and claim our prize? No, no. Let's not make hasty accusations. By the look of things, the ritual was proceeding as planned. We arrived at the appointed hour. It was they who erred. It is hopeless. We cannot face them all. Do mine ears deceive? A boy! So that's the way of it. Twins! You had me worried for a moment there. Know that I will happily make it quicker for you. If you just stand still. Enough, Jarumal. We wouldn't want to upset the man in white with any unnecessary bloodshed now, would we? You've been awfully busy since we were kind enough to spare your lives. While you were idly consorting with the Asians, you mean? Seven hells! What could you possibly hope to achieve? Should I explain it to you? Very well. Consider it a reward of sorts for beating us here. 
You know the tale of Hydaelyn and Zodiac, I take it? Of the Great Sundering, and the reflections it created? Across ten and three they were divided, reflections of the Source, each possessed of shards of light and dark. Just so. One of those reflections, the one nearest to the Source, is our home. And we were the heroes blessed with her light. But not all worlds hold light and dark in equal measure. In ours, the power of light was greater by far. So the Asians who once threatened our home were no match. And they fell before us, one after another, till none were left. Victory, we thought. And then came the light. A flood of pure, blinding radiance, annihilating shadow and color and life itself. Ere long it will consume our world, leaving naught in its wake but blank perfection. That... that cannot be! Do you honestly expect us to believe such a story? Believe what you like. But it has happened before, on a world far removed from ours. The Thirteenth, which was swallowed by the dark and transformed into what you call the Void. Unchallenged light would condemn us to a similar fate. And so we joined hands with our former enemies, and with their aid came here, to the Source. For there is but one way to restore the balance and save our home. The Arda. Calamitous destruction with the power to break down the barriers between planes and see our worlds rejoined. You would doom our world to save your own? What would even become of us? Of you? Enough. I tire of talking. You know our cause. You know what is at stake. We are prepared to do whatever it takes. Are you? If there is aught you would say, say it. Otherwise, be gone. You have no friends here. Alize, how are you feeling? Well enough, brother. Thanks to the kindness of our hosts. They told me you had departed for Zelfatol while I was still abed. I slept much better knowing that. Thank you. I take it your mission was a success. As if we needed any further confirmation that they are in league with the Asians. But to save another world? I think not. I too thought his story fanciful at first. But it is possible there may be a kernel of truth in all of this. At the very least, none of his claims contradict the word's account. You were following these people, Alizé. Why? During my travels, I had often enjoyed tales of the Siams and their exploits. But after a time, I began to hear whispers of a gifted and theretofore unknown band of adventurers. Adventurers who had supposedly sworn to travel the realm slaying primals in the Siam's stead. 
the Warriors of Darkness. And in the course of investigating these rumours, you stumbled upon the Asian's involvement. Yes, exactly. Forgive me, but if these Warriors of Darkness mean to bring about another calamity, to what end do they hunt primals? To prompt an escalation. To deepen the Beast Tribe's feelings of helplessness and despair, and thereby drive them to summon ever more powerful gods. And lest we forget, these events do not occur in isolation. With their patron deities being slain left and right, the news of man's victory over Nidhogg must surely have sown panic in the minds of the Beastmen. Tis no wonder they wish to defend themselves. Power answered with greater power, death with more death, a vicious cycle fueled by fear and hatred. I know it's like all too well. Indeed, the Asians sow discord and desperation, and the warriors of darkness reap the harvest. And so it continues. Yet that is not the extent of their ambitions. The Asian himself observed that once the powerless realize that the old gods have failed them, they will have little recourse but to look to a new one. We cannot let that happen. It should come as no surprise, but Alize and I have uncovered evidence that the Asians have been manipulating certain parties to ensure that a constant stream of crystals flows into the hands of the beast tribes. If we sever these supply lines, we should at least be able to slow the escalation. Agreed. Kral and I shall journey to Zelfatol and learn what we can of the Ixar's source. Then I, for my part, pledge to lead a similar investigation into the origin of the Nath supply. Sir Emmerich? As a member of the Eorzean Alliance, Ishgard is on a bound to play an active role in maintaining the security of the realm. You might also say that I have some personal motivation, given the Asian's dealings with my father. However, I make no secret of the fact that my knowledge of primal beings is scant at best. As such, I should be most grateful if one of your order were to assist me. Allow me, Sir Emmerich. I have dealt with the Nath before. Let us consult with Orianja then. Given his dedication to the study of primal beings, I should be surprised if he could not tell us something of value. Allow me to accompany you, brother. And before you think to refuse, know that I am not the girl I once was. I shall not be a burden. You have my word. But Alize, you... You are more than welcome. After all, it was you who set us upon this path. Wait a minute! I'm afraid I can't allow you to leave just yet. Not until you try on the new outfit I prepared for you. Who goes there? Oh, it's you. Forgive me for straying from the camp. 
He hasn't been feeling too welcome, to say the least. I thought a change of scenery might do him good. But, alas. <sighs> it's so quiet out here. The stars spread out before us, beckoning across time and space. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. How bitterly beautiful those words. I should be stronger for all my experiences, yet my heart aches more than ever. I never understood why Grandfather gave his life that day. I thought that if I came here, I would find the answers I needed. But when I finally laid eyes on the land he sacrificed everything to save, saw firsthand the bickering, the pettiness. I was disappointed. I was angry. I could not fathom how these people were more deserving of his love than his family, than me. Nevertheless, I had to believe he had good reason. I was determined to uncover the whole truth of the calamity and, perhaps in so doing, find my own purpose in this sea of chaos. My travels have been enlightening, but I cannot say that I have enjoyed them. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. There were others, of course. Good people. People with whom I felt a kinship, whose lives I could not save. I found myself asking what it was all for. Why try if I was doomed to fail in the end? But then I recalled Grandfather's words to my father, years ago, before he left Charlayan behind forever. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the manner of our own choosing. We have to try, do we not? Of course it's one thing to try and another to do. There were times while I was tracking the warriors of darkness when I faltered, when I was afraid. But then I thought of my brother, of Uri Angers. Oh, pray forgive me. This conversation has been rather one-sided, hasn't it? Mayhap you could recount some of your adventures in Ishgard. Gods! They must have been at each other's throats from dawn till dusk. I dare say you managed to keep the peace, though. Merely being in the presence of the Warrior of Light is surely enough to shame anyone into behaving. The hopes and dreams of so many rest on your shoulders, Warrior of Light. As long as the sun rises, we can but carry on for the sake of those we hold dear. To what end dost thou cling to the tainted gifts of the mother? Every tool has its purpose. Even this. Well, what is it? 
The seeds sown in Vilbrand have been plucked from the earth and left to wither. Alas, Titan's demise sufficed not to drive the kobolds to deepest desperation. What did the man in white have to say? That we are to proceed as he did first set forth. Well, that's easy for him to say! It's not his bloody world on the brink of destruction, is it? Be thou well reminded that with an end to Ishgard's unrest, naught now remaineth to preoccupy the Scion's thoughts, and thus may they devote their every energy to thwarting thee and thine. I foresee only greater difficulties ahead. For see, are you sure you don't welcome them? I'm starting to think you might hold a candle for your old friends after all. Pray do not mistake mine intent. I but look upon the path which lieth before us with due trepidation. Shouldst thou be of like mind, pray consider then another course. For the power to invoke the ardor belongeth not unto the Assians alone. With thine own hand strike down thine enemy, the so-called hero who would see thy home lost to light. Do but this, and thou wouldst at a single stroke disrupt the all-too-delicate balance of this realm, plunging her straightways into chaos. You do realize what you're suggesting, yes? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. The words of my teacher and a creed I hold close to my heart. Very well. Draw her out. We'll make it quick. It shall be done. What good a creed one cannot uphold. What hurts soothed. What lives saved? Oh, hapless fool, what hast thou wrought by thine own hands? Minfilia, my friends, I shall not now beg your forgiveness. Full deeply, though it paineth me to walk it, I shall not stray from my chosen path. As Moonbreeder remains steadfast, so too shall I. Brothers and sisters, 20 years ago, Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Galian Empire. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. 
And I know each and every one of you feels the same. We abandoned them, our own flesh and blood, to labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out, building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. We abandoned them, the brave and true, to fight and die for their country. Or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandoned them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Garleans pass, to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead, but a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. You all know the Eorzean Alliance will do not to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us. And they have murdered us. But no more. Blood demands blood, and the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands. This I promise you, for we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it, and together we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gear Arbania once more! A power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. Wait, is that... What are you two doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Well, well, this is quite the surprise. If you see what I see, if you feel as I feel... Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? For it is not strength of arms that will win this battle, but strength of heart. My thanks, comrades. You must be the esteemed adventurers of whom I've heard so much. I understand you have taken an interest in our cause. A great interest, you might say. Your words have certainly made quite an impression on my friend and I. The Resistance has long, and some would say wisely, avoided open engagements with the Garleans, but you and yours seem confident against the world in arms. I can only assume you have good reason to be so bold. Why, one might even think you were planning to summon a primal! 
because that would do much to explain the sizable shipment of crystals you recently received from your smuggler friends, whom our Ishgardian allies have since detained, lest you wonder. I'd like to hear more about the Griffin. The real Griffin. Your performance earlier didn't fool us. Ah, the famous scions of the Seventh Dawn. I should have known better than to think I could conceal the truth from you lot. You are right. I am not the Griffin, but I speak with his voice, and it was at his BS that we procured those crystals. You are wrong, however, if you think that we procured them to summon a primal. We used them to reach an accord with the Amalja. In exchange for crystals to summon their god, they will aid us in the fight for Alamegan liberation. You've got to be joking! Have you gone completely mad? When people find out you helped the Lizardmen summon Ifrit, they'll turn on the Resistance. Alamigo will never be free! This isn't a fairy tale, girl. We don't have the luxury to play at being honourable heroes. It's because the likes of you wouldn't sully your saintly hands that Alamigo's been under the yoke for the past 20 years. But the Griffin won't stand for it, and neither will we. We're ready to do whatever it takes. What proof do you have of this arrangement with the Amalja? What? Aside from a lack of crystals? None. But the beastmen have a great big pile of the things if you fancy looking. You might want to hurry, though. It'll not be long before they summon their god. Search our camp if you don't believe me. We have naught to hide. If there is a cache to be found, Ida and I will find it. Then let us be off. Are you perchance the Warrior of Light? Aye, I thought so. You should know that a great many who have joined us did so because you saved them. Because you showed them that one brave woman can make a difference. You saved me too once. Helped a friend over in Quarry Mill make some medicine I needed. But that was a lifetime ago. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, I thank you. You gave us hope where there was none, courage and strength when all was lost. We shall not squander your gift. I know that look, Ida, and I do not like it. You cannot seriously be contemplating taking up arms with that band of cutthroats. I... I just... If the Griffin and his men have their way, it is only a matter of time before the situation in Alamigo comes to a head. Your homeland's future teeters on a knife edge, and any reckless action, however small, could have irrevocable consequences. You mustn't lose sight of that, Ida. When the time comes, we must all make our choices, but we must do so in full possession of the facts. Now, let us away. There is work to be done.
This isn't right. The Amalja would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. <laughs> ah, the saviors of Eorzea. Slow as ever. By the Twelve, will you never learn? You know, you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. Killing primals, tormenting beastmen, hastening the birth of a new god. It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the warrior of light, on the other hand, that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. One life for one world. A fair exchange! Wouldn't you agree? Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. Carbuncle! Defend me! I sense you will offer more than mere target practice, unlike your sister. Alize! Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? I am not the girl I once was. My brother was always the clever one, while my talents lay elsewhere. dare to stand against us, to destroy all that we hold dear, then you shall die by my sword! Let's finish this. It ends... now. What? The chains! God, you snake! You would betray us as well? He that holdeth fast unto his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. My path is unchanged, my creed sacrosanct. This I believe with all my heart. But say, warrior of darkness, and speak true, what dost thou believe? That rendering up the souls of thy world in service to the rejoining will grant it salvation? Nay. By the Twelve! Oriange! Mine apologies, Master Alfino, that the brightest light might shine, 
Duty did compel me to walk in darkest shade. You sweet fool. I was almost willing to believe you had turned against us. I expect a full explanation when this is over. For now, may I assume you have turned your cloak for the last time? Thou mayest, my lady. By thy leave. Even odds, then. No matter. We'll crush the lot of you in one fell swoop! Understood. Hearken to me. We only have one chance. Channel your ether into my blade that I might strike before the mage casts his spell. We cannot do it alone, but together, together we can defeat them! Alize, are you hurt? A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. <sighs> we are far from finished. Or have you never considered how we came to this world? Crystals? You mean... like the Asians? Just so. As the Asians flee unto the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. Eloquent, as always. Aye, like the Asians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. Wait! Such methods as the Asians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... You would have had to... At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought, until there was no one left to fight. We won! 
And now our world is being erased from existence. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us and still, still it came to this. You of all people should understand. We cannot, we will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction and now we must save it. <clears throat> I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. No matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind. To have known the depth of sorrow and embraced the highest sacrifice. Nonetheless, Master Louis Soi, guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly! Thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal! What is this place? Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh, my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard, nor your sacrifices unnoticed. Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save, whom I can yet save. Minfilia. Blessed children of the first, the light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance, but it is not yet absolute. 
I will hie me to your world, and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this farce no longer! As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications, she has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light. Thank you, Uri Angers, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Hydaelyn had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, I learnt of a star like unto our own, a doomed world of fallen heroes in whom I glimpsed ourselves, the first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labour to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this not to save her, but to send her away! One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me, and our gifts to them. Forming a bond which transcends time and space. Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. Make me proud. Long have I watched you from Hydaelyn's side, watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn.
The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tupsumati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it. would seem the power of our crystals is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be done. Hear me, servant of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this, as one fool to another. Light, dark, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it, so please, forge a different path. Seize a better fate. strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor. Back in the solar. It's been too long since we were all together like this. Not since. Not since after Moonbraider. Much has changed since then. We ourselves, most of all. Though not all who were lost could be gathered here today, we may take comfort in the knowledge that those who are not are carrying on the fight. While I am grateful to our friends in the North for their hospitality, it isn't half good to be back. 
But, as Papalima rightly said, much has changed since we last stood here. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn are not as they once were, nor should we be. Our travels in the North brought us into contact with a host of fine and generous people, and their selfless deeds serve to show me that it is not lofty causes that should inform our actions, but our hearts. And I hope that the Scions might continue in this manner, as individuals driven by individual principles. Provided we all sincerely desire to work towards Eorzea's salvation, I believe the paths we follow to achieve it need not, and should not, be dictated by any single ideal. Companions bound by a common purpose, free to go whither they will. The idea is not without merit. Very well. I shall resume my research of the primals and the elder gods of Eorzea. Should anyone have need of my findings, you need only ask. I should be glad of your continued assistance. Well, my main purpose in coming here was to see the signs of the Seventh Dawn restored and my dear friend found. Nevertheless, Having involved myself in your struggles, I feel compelled to see them through to the bitter end. For Minfilia's sake. That is, if there are no objections. You will always be welcome here, Kryl. Oriangere, can we trust you to carry on your investigation of the Assians as before? Regardless of mine own desires, I am undeserving of your trust, having so villainously deceived you all. Now, now, I'll hear no more of that. It would be disrespectful of Minfidia's wishes. She entrusted matters here to us, that we might protect this star and understand the truth which hides at her heart. Mayhap I can handle the former, but I think you far better suited to the latter. No? Very well. Then out of love for my Lady Minfilia and Moonbreeder both, this shall be my solemn charge. I... Papalimo and I should probably return to Thandalan to keep an eye on the Resistance. There's still the matter of the Griffin and the Amalja, not to mention the new Imperial Viceroy. That little lot must be worthy of our attention, right? And what will you do, Alizé? You know I have no great love for organisations and formalities. That being said, this new approach you propose is not wholly objectionable, and we've always got her to keep us from bickering. But I will suffer no titles. I am not here for House Leveilleux, nor to walk in Grandfather's shadow. Upon that point, we see eye to eye. If it please you, you may think of me as but another comrade in arms. Well then, Alfie, I for my part shall see to the paperwork and the finances with my characteristic aplomb. I would not have it any other way, Tataru. And we mustn't forget you. What now for the Warrior of Light?
Indeed. The path behind us was fraught with hardship, and the path before us will be no less unforgiving. But a new dawn shall break over the realm, and I see before me the faces of those who will deliver it. One world's heroes are another world's villains. One world's loss, another world's gain. Where men go as one, there is life. And where there is life, My friends, if I may, I would ask that you entrust Tupsimati to me. Clouds gather upon the horizon, and as Master Louisois's disciple, I would keep it close at hand. Thank you. I shall guard it well. There is cause to hope. For every ending, every parting, marks a new beginning. We're here! Did we miss anything? We would not presume to begin without you, Ida. Orianger has returned to the Waking Sands, but everyone else is now present. Yes, but for what exactly? We all have duties to attend to, Elfino, so you may dispense with the preamble. Thank you, Elise. It is the very subject of those duties which compelled me to call this gathering. Though the warriors of darkness no longer pose a threat, Eorzea's many troubles demand no less of our attention. And while I stand by the decision to approach each task as we see fit, I fear our effectiveness will ultimately be diminished should we continue to act in ignorance of each other's efforts. Thus, I propose we elect a successor to Minfilia. Not to serve as a fully-fledged antecedent, perhaps, but as a coordinator of operations. Is that all? Well, then the decision seems clear. No one else has shown any enthusiasm for the role, and judging by your performance at our previous meeting, you would seem the perfect candidate. You always did have a flair for politics. I, I did not mean to... That was not my intention. 
As my tenure as commander of the Crystal Braves comprehensively demonstrated, I lack the qualities required for such an office. I would much prefer to remain as I am now, a soldier in the field, so to speak. Should none of our numbers step forward, must we then constrain some unwilling candidate to take up the position? Well, based on merit alone, a certain adventurer would be my choice. Though I concede she might struggle to balance her new responsibilities with, let me see, slaying primals, thwarting legatuses, and feeding the orphan poor. Thancred makes a good point. Any who would wear such a mantle would be bound by its obligations. Have we not become sufficiently familiar with each other's methods to act without an overseer? At present, I see no cause to so willingly limit one of our number. Oh, oh my goodness! Your... help! I need some help here! Tataru, are you all right? Me? I'm fine. It's this poor girl who just staggered in and collapsed on the floor that I'm worried about. Narco! God, how did... You stole her! Please, you have to help her! Kral, a hand if you would. Let us see about closing these wounds. Now, we've staunched the bleeding, but it may be a while before you can move about again. Though, having seen your wounds, I'm surprised you are still moving at all. <sighs> Thank you. My message. It was too important to delay. I took the shortest route I could, though I knew it was more heavily patrolled. As you can see, my efforts at evasion were not entirely successful. Honestly, you're too brave for your own good. What was so urgent that you needed to fight half the Empire to get here? You could have been killed! I'm sorry, Ida. I had good reason. Ah, but I imagine your friends are wondering who this bloody mess of a Mikote is. My name is Minago, and I belong to the Alamegan Resistance. I came to warn Ida and Papalimo about one of our leaders. A man who calls himself the Griffin. He's always been dangerous, but he's planning something new. Something reckless. The Griffin, you say? I've heard the name. Rumor has it your man is eager to test his claws. Aye, and on no easy target. He means to assault Belthar's wall from the Alamegan side. But what does the Griffin possibly hope to gain from such an attack? From what I understand, he wants the fires of war to spread to Eorzea. And for that, he needs to control the border with Gridania. So... He means to spark a conflict between the Alliance and the Imperial forces stationed in Alamigo, to have Eorzea's armies aid in the liberation effort, whether they will it or no. His plan is flawed. Even should the Resistance succeed in occupying the Wall, they would not be able to hold it. Imperial reinforcements would drive them out within a week. Be that as it may, if there is even a chance that this scheme could bring about an escalation in hostilities between Eorzea and the Empire, the Alliance must be informed. Agreed. I should depart for Limsa Laminsa forthwith and seek an audience with the Admiral. Thancred, Uldar is yours. Alphano and Alize, make haste to the Twelveswood and notify the Elder Seedseer of the danger to Gridania. She would duly call a council of the Alliance leaders, whom you must be ready to receive. You will be our voice in Ishgard. Explain the situation to Sir Emmerich, and encourage him to send an envoy. 
Tataru, Cryo. I leave the care of our injured messenger to you. See that she remains quiescent and her wounds closed. I believe that covers everything. Let us be about our tasks. I suspect the ill tidings from Girabania will be held as a turning point. The beginning to a bloody end. The business of war was ever conducted with the coin of self-sacrifice. T'was Master Louis Soir himself who taught us that such costs are not to be ignored or denied. And so, I shall embrace them. When the time comes, I will make my choice, as you will yours. I bid you welcome, my friends. As you will by now be aware, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have come into possession of certain intelligence concerning recent developments in the region of Gear Abania. It springs, I am assured, from an unimpeachable source. Is that not so, Master Alfino? Indeed, Elder Seedseer. Our information comes directly from a member of the Resistance's inner circle, and we have no cause to doubt its veracity. This griffin of theirs is a fool if he thinks he can hold Belsar's wall against the Empire. When the Imperials move to take it back, they will come in force, and the resulting fighting is all but certain to spill over into the Black Shroud. At the Battle of Cartano, the combined might of three grand companies labored to contend with the remnants of but a single Imperial Legion. Alone, Gridania would be hard-pressed indeed to hold back the tide, should the Garleans turn their minds from reclamation to invasion. May I once more convey my nation's deepest regrets for our inaction in the days prior to the Calamity. Tis a stain upon our ledger that I would fain remove. Elder Seedseer, I do hereby request leave to deploy a defensive force within the borders of Gridania. Ishgard's return to the Alliance shall be honored by more than mere ink upon parchment. The Doman people, too, would join any effort that weakens our common foe. We are few, but our most seasoned shinobi are at your disposal. On behalf of my people, I offer you my humble thanks. Gridania welcomes your assistance. It is time we set our contingency plans in motion. Is the Alliance agreed? Then let us make ready for war. Victory favors the swift. There is much to be done. The Council knows that Alamigo will not soon be wrested from the Empire and its decision to bolster the border's defences seems eminently practical. Why then, brother, do you scowl so? I agree that they have chosen the wisest course available. Indeed, the only reasonable one. Yet something feels awry. In making ready for war, is the Alliance not granting the Griffin the very thing he desired? 
Any attempt to hold the wall is doomed to failure, aye. But I wonder if we have misjudged the prize for which he plays. You've beaten me, I. But you cannot stop what I've begun. Behold, a glimpse of things to come. Aye! Victory is ours! And who knows, lads? Mayhap the Eorzeans will finally see sense when the enemy turns up on their bloody doorstep. This is for Alamigo, for Eorzea. They die that others may live. Vanguards, attack! Seven hells. Do you hear that? War machines. How did they get here so quickly? Stand your ground for the resistance. There's nowhere to run. We're cut off. Help us? What are we thinking? The Empire's too big. Too powerful. <sighs> Mighty Rolker. Grant us the strength. There you are. As you can see, our infiltrators did not elude me for long. Lady Ugiri is sending for an airship even as we speak. What do we do? This is a massacre! <laughs> How wonderful to see you, Commander.
Ill bird. I should have known. This has to end. It has to end now. Do you not see your countrymen dying? Have your ideals rendered you blind even to that? Order the retreat, and we will help your soldiers to safety. Retreat? With the moment of my triumph so close at hand, you truly are a sheltered child, Levayer. Nidhogg's eyes! No abyss is too deep for you, I see. But trust me when I say that such power was not meant for mortal hands. How long have I struggled to reach this point? My countrymen, so inured to the taste of defeat, they no longer balk at its bitterness, shouting my throat raw with rallying cries, only to be greeted with dull eyes and blank faces. My brothers and sisters in Ulda have surrendered to their apathy and their appetites. Were it not for the glint of Lodorito's coin, I doubt even those here now would have answered my call. Take back our homeland! Free Alamigo! Ha! They'll happily mouth the words, but they won't spill the blood. You say no mortal should wield these eyes? Then I shall gladly become a demon. I will suckle on the souls of the hopeless and liberate the homeland they no longer deserve. What exactly do you mean to do? Did you hear their cries as victory was snatched away from them? Even with their dying breaths, they cursed the Empire. Never has their desire for vengeance been so raw, so true. A god has no need of faith when summoned by so pure a purpose. Summoned? You cannot mean to fight the Empire with a primal! You know full well the danger, the futility of relying on such power! Oh yes, I know their limitations. Which is why I will call upon a deity more terrible than the very black worm of the Calamity itself! What? Here? Now? Like hell, you will! An ending! To mark a new beginning! My pain! My longing! You shall have it all!
This light, is it... His death completed the ritual. The primal is taking shape. Well, can't we stop it? There must be something we can do! There is one thing. What? Hey! Where do you think you're going? Master Louisois briefly contained Bahamut by means of a potent spell of sealing. I will now attempt to do the same. B but that's impossible! We would need hours to collect the necessary ether, if not days! Ah, uh, Alphino, though I concede it may not always be apparent, I was ever your grandsire's finest pupil. Tibtimati, of course! The staff still holds enormous power, broken or not. Don't you dare, Papalimo! I know how that spell works. It is time to leave! Quite right! Quickly now, off you go! The further away, the better! No! If you're staying, then so am I! No, Ida! There is a path only you can walk, and it must not end here! Not like this! Take her! Please, you have to take her! <sighs> what? No! Damn it, Thancred! Put me down! Thancred! This is one battle you cannot fight. Away with you! Go! I think he means now! I bid thee farewell again, my dear Ida. Now... Let us see how good a student I truly was. A word, if you would, good sir. This place, it is within the realm of Eorzea. 
You're an odd-looking fellow, aren't you? Still, takes all sorts, I suppose. Uh, this here's Vespa Bay. Thanalan's door to the ocean, as some folk like to call it. Am I to understand from your answer that I have indeed arrived in Eorzea? Eh? Yes, you're in Eorzea. Ah! A plain response at last, and the one I wanted at that. My journey was not without its hardships, and I would sooner travel by land than put to sea again. <laughs> you do not believe that so small a bark could bear me across the ocean? Such timid little sailors. I had but to set my course and set my jaw till I made port. <laughs> Though... It would perhaps have been wise to lay down my oars a moment to sup on more than the spray of brine water. By the trembling of my limbs, I sense a brief repast may be in order. Nay, I will not hearken to the feeble grumblings of an empty belly. Duty comes before all. Man, are you all right? Thou art far indeed from home, friend. Dear friends, pray accept my heartfelt thanks for your efforts in defense of Gridania's borders. I would fain dwell longer on my gratitude for the support of the Alliance, but the situation at Belsar's Wall demands that we forego such pleasantries. According to our most recent intelligence, the cocoon of light that formed in the air above the wall remains undimmed and unbroken. After measuring the cocoon's etheric concentrations, Archon Yishtola has confirmed the presence of a primal entity. <laughs> so we must assume that Ilbert's thrice damned god is indeed trapped within. And what news of the Imperials? They're not like to ignore such a spectacle. Sir, a Galian airship was observed making an approach, but the vessel was destroyed when it drew near. The Empire appears to have made no subsequent attempts to reach the object. The soldiers who witnessed the incident spoke of a lance of light issuing from within the cocoon of an entire warship being reduced to smoking ruin in the space of a moment. Veterans of Cartano, meanwhile, likened the destruction to that wrought by the fiery wrath of Bahamut. We could face another calamity. So the Primal is awake, then? Contained, yes, but for how long? We must destroy it now, lest it break free. Agreed. 
There is, however, the small matter of how to get close enough to a being that swats warships from the sky as you would a bothersome gnat. Is this truly so complex a puzzle? Or have you no stomach for the obvious solution? What in the hells are you doing here? A pleasure to see you too, Garland. Now, if you'd be so kind as to explain to these good people why you should be begging me for my assistance, that would be most appreciated. Who is this man? Oh, how terrifically rude of me. Nero Tolskeva, former Tribunus of the 14th Legion of the Garlian Empire. These days, however, one might say that I'm something of a free agent. What do you want, Nero? I was getting to that. Although you already know what I'm about to propose, old friend. As you have rather belatedly realized, within that frail binding lurks an entity alike in strength to the great Bahamut, and the only force in existence which might conceivably contend with such a foe is the very creation which captured the Elder Primal in the first place. I speak, of course, of Omega. Omega? That hulk has been gathering dust beneath the plains of Cartanau since the Alagans breathed the last. And none alive knows how to wake it. I'm sorry? Do you understand who it is with whom you have the privilege of speaking? I'm Nero Tolskeva, Master Engineer, the mechanical genius who restored the Ultima weapon to full operational capacity. And as luck would have it, I am graciously offering you the use of my considerable expertise. And what, you just expect us to accept? Why would we trust the word of a man who furnished the Black Wolf with the means to subjugate Eorzea? Trust? You wound me, Garland. All those years, studying side by side at the Academy, sharing both trial and triumph, we were countrymen once, you and I. But sentiment aside, have you a better solution? Or do you mean to send in your vaunted hero there, as you always do, and pray the world is not engulfed in flame? Let us approach the problem in a rational manner. Does not the fact that Omega slumbers in stasis point to the existence of some overriding technology? A means of control? I would ask a question, if I may. Nero, was it not? In the event that we succeeded in using Omega to shackle the Primal in the manner you propose, what then would become of it? Do we not risk repeating the mistakes of the Alagans? Omega is but a tool. How we choose to employ that tool is entirely up to us. Of course, if you would rather leave it buried beneath Cartano while you continue your petty squabbles above, then I suppose that is also your choice. Spare us, Nero. The Seed Seer's concern is a valid one. He who controls Omega wields the power of the gods, the very power which led the Alagans to destroy themselves. And does it not fall to we engineers to prevent such misuse? 
What was your company's proud slogan? Freedom through technology? <laughs> A creed you follow, is it? <sighs> what say you? Do we take this villain at his word? He makes me grind my teeth, is what he does. But I suppose we don't have much of a choice. Would the Council be willing to entrust this matter to a pair of former Imperials? Yes. The task of restoring the Alagan relic will be yours. But the responsibility for its reawakening must remain with the Council. Do we condone this course of action? Aye. It would seem we do. Let the record show that we invest this contingent with the authority to enter Cartanau and take command of Omega. Sid? I appoint you leader of the expedition. Science, I would ask that you assign some few of your number to escort Master Garland and supervise the other one. We should be happy to oblige. The politics of Cartano being what they are, I dare say our neutrality will prove useful in avoiding any unnecessary entanglements. If I am not mistaken, Doma occupies a similarly neutral position. Might we not persuade you to join the expedition, Lady Yugiri? If you suspected any foul play from Nero, you would be welcome to kill him. My blade is yours. Not a moment's hesitation, eh? You'll forgive me if I do not shake your hand. So these are the fabled headquarters of the Scions. I confess I would have expected an order of self-proclaimed warrior scholars to surround themselves with the fruits of man's enlightenment. And yet there's not so much as a single piece of Magitek in sight. It never ceases to amaze me how primitive you Eorzeans truly are. I'll have you know that the Rising Stones is home to the very latest in Magitech innovation. Wedge calls it the Mark 14 Thermocoil Boilmaster, and it's the finest kettle I've ever had the pleasure to own. We are returned. Well, Ida and I, at least. Ishtola and the others remain behind to continue their assessment of the binding magic. There didn't seem much point staying just for that, so I decided to come back with Alphano. Papalimo bought us this time. We shouldn't waste it. By your leave! Good gods, that voice could fell a gigas. This is the Rising Stones, domicile of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I enter at the invitation of one Lord Urionge. 
<laughs> I spy you there, Shadow Walker. You always were a hard one to find. Yugiri, do you know this man? Gosetsu! Why are you come to Eorzea? In search of you, Yugiri! For days and nights did I row across the angry sea. I made port in good spirits, only for my own flesh to betray me over the trifling matter of an empty belly. Collapsed in the street like an unfed stray I was, until Lord Urionje came to my aid. Over a most welcome meal, we spoke of the plight of Doma, and I learned of our displaced countrymen's work to resettle this blighted land. T'was blind fortune that I was able to locate you so swiftly. But now we must make ready to depart. Our master languishes in dire peril, and Doma calls her daughter home. It is not so simple, Gosetsu. There are obligations which bind me here. You... you refuse? Did you mislay your oath during your flight from our homeland? The laws of hospitality must be honored, but surely the vow to defend your master demands the greater obeisance. It was our master who bid me guide our people to safe haven by any means necessary. And it was the scions you see before you who provided us succor and sanctuary when all others refused. Dire peril or no, were I to return without first repaying such hospitality, our master would cut me down at the threshold. Hmm, mayhap that is so. There is more. A crisis threatens all within this realm, Eorzean and Doman alike, and I go to play my part in its resolution. I will not bring shame upon our liege by abandoning my people or my duty. Hmm, how very noble of you. Now, in the name of honor, kinship, and, ah oh yes, practicality, might I suggest we get this expedition underway? Or would you rather debate the finer points of duty and leave Omega to the Empire? The Empire? You giddy. You draw steel against the curse of Gollumold? Then why did you not say so? My blade is oath-bound to fall upon the ranks of the Imperials wheresoever they march. Lead on, Shadow Walker, and may the enemy tremble at our coming. Now, where was that? Ah! I've enabled the teleporter. One brief jump and we shall arrive in Omega's control room. How convenient. You've been here before. Of course. It was no easy task, threading a path through all the skirmishes. But how could I ignore the existence of such a fascinating toy? You may trust that my preliminary examination was suitably thorough. Trust? Aye. I trust your appetite for technology. I chased down a suspect airship, and who should I find but the traitor, Sid Garland?
Searching for something, engineer? Something big? It's close, isn't it? <laughs> it's like all my name days have come at once. Of all the scouts the Empire could have sent. Take care of that brute, will you? God damn it. Can't let Nero tinker around in there by himself. I'm sorry to leave you to it, but I dare say you'll manage without me. This clod has no idea who he's dealing with. I am Gorsetsu! Samurai of Doma! You will rue your choice of opponent this day! Temporal stasis disengaged. All systems operational. Garland? All clear on this side. It's waking up. Omega sensors immediately detected the presence of the cocoon, even at this distance. They must have been set to scan for sources of energy exceeding certain magnitudes. I still don't see any means to control the machine directly. It seems to have been designed to act wholly autonomously. Hmm. Once we release Omega, we can be fairly certain it will attempt to capture the Primal at Belsar's Wall. Assuming its mission is successful, our only option at that point will be to re-engage its stasis system and put it back to sleep. And should the machine happen to misbehave, we'll simply initiate an emergency shutdown. I confess, we don't yet have a complete grasp of its capabilities, but I'm certain the details will not elude us for long. Well, I understood less than half of that. So, my question to you is, are we doing the right thing? What do I think? Right. Step aside, Sid. Is this the thing I need to press? Uh, yes. That's the one. You gave too much for us to waste this chance, Papalimo. So this is for you. And me. <laughs> yes! Fly free, my pretty! Show us what you can do!
The launch sequence has begun. Omega is loose. Omega has stopped transmitting. But that shouldn't be. I, I didn't engage the stasis system. And what does this signify? I have little understanding of these contrivances. The launch went exactly to plan, but all signals emanating from Omega have ceased. 
This may indicate any number of things, but we will need to join the Scions out in the field if we are to ascertain which one. Right. I've ordered the malfunctioning beast to go to sleep. That should prevent any unfortunate mishaps. I suggest we make our way back to Gradania. Omega destroyed the cocoon. Papalimo's spell is fading. It was bound to his ether, you see. And if the connection is broken... My friends, I cannot well express how glad I am to see you both unharmed. They say that Omega's clash with the Primal shook the very firmament. You need not have worried. The battle took place far above the ground. We were able to observe in relative safety, though I am given to understand that there were casualties on the far side of the wall. It was like watching a nightmare unfold before our very eyes. Ilbird's primal manifested in the form of a colossal dragon, a being of pure violence. It burst forth from the cocoon with such terrible force. That such a horror should spring from the eyes of Nidhogg comes as no surprise. Nor do I wonder at its form. Ilbird all but announced it in the moments prior to his death. Plainly, it was his dying wish to visit a second calamity upon the Empire. And I am quite certain the Abomination would have obliged had it not found itself outmatched by a Mega. Gods! I am no stranger to the works of Alag, but even I was unprepared for the machine's furiosity. It beggared belief. And how fares poor Ida in the midst of all this? Have you spoken with her? She is up on the platform, lost in thought. We deemed it best not to disturb her, but mayhap she would welcome some company after all. Shall we? The light's gone. It was all we had left of him. Ida. I don't blame anyone. I knew what was going to happen. I knew the spell Papalimo meant to cast would drain away his life force. I knew that it would only buy us a little time. Ida, there is no need to explain. But there is. I can't hide in Papalimo's little shadow anymore, and I shouldn't hide behind my sister's mask. Twenty years ago, on the day the Empire marched into Alamigo, I was still just a child, not even five summers old. My father had been one of the leaders of the revolution. He had fought to overthrow the mad king, Theodoric. 
and my sister had fought alongside him. But she was strong and kind, and always knew what to do. But when the Garleans came, everything changed. My father went to war against them too, and I never saw him again. After that, I remember a lot of running. My sister dragged me for malms and malms until we came to the city of Charlian. That was where she met Master Louis Soir. He introduced her to the Circle of Knowing, and she eventually became an Archon. She was your inspiration. Is that not why you took up her mask and her name? Or did you simply mean to continue what she had started? You've known all along, haven't you? That I wasn't Ida. Of course. We all recognized you at once. It was Papalimo who persuaded us to maintain the charade. It was silly to think I could fool you. I knew that even then, but I... I sort of... decided not to know. Ida died six years ago, on a mission to smuggle refugees out of Alamigo. They say she was overwhelmed by Imperial soldiers when she stayed behind to save a little girl. She was so strong. There must have been a lot of them. I'm sorry for lying to you. My real name is Lise. When Papalimo brought me Ida's mask, it was meant as a keepsake, but... I decided I wanted to be his new partner, to keep alive all the good that she had done. I didn't want to become Ida, exactly. At the time, though, I still didn't know who I was myself and it almost seemed easier to play the role. Papalimo agreed to help, of course, but it was never what he wanted for me. He wanted me to walk my own path, and those were his final words to me. The Archon's mark he gave me is faded, and my last excuse along with it So this is it. Whatever I choose to do from now on, I do as lease. And I choose to continue my family's fight. I want Alamigo to be the country that Ida and my father always wanted it to be. War is upon us once more. Do you regret standing against the Empire? Would you have chosen a different road, knowing what you know now? To claim that I never doubted the decision would be a lie. But I made my choice, and I have defended it with blade in hand ever since. The battle continues, and our steel is needed. Come, Shadow Walker. We leave for the east, for Doma. <laughs>